change your lives and make you whole. He'll give you peace you never knew. Sweet love and joy and heaven through oh, only Jesus. Only Jesus. Can satisfy your soul. Only Jesus can satisfy your soul. And only He can change your life and make you. Church of God and Saints of Christ, unto the Elder Mokotula, to the Bishop 
to all of the evangelists at large, to the evangelists, the elders, my fellow deacons, to the sister elders, and to the daughters of Jerusalem, sisters of mercy and sons of God's holy prophet. I deem it an honor and a privilege to stand before you today to break for you the bread of life. I'm honored to be in the house of worship with you. It's been a dream of mine for a long time to journey to the motherland, and I'm grateful to be here today, even if just virtually. I thank God for the saints and for the elder and the saints there thinking enough of me to invite me to speak for you today and to disseminate God's holy and most sacred word. Truly thank God and I bless God for your presence and for your spirit. It's been a wonderful thing to spend time with you over these past few months to spend the holy convocation with you and to come on every now and then on the Sabbath. I bless the Lord. Bless the Lord for even this Zoom platform and for the man of God, Prophet Crowdy, who brought us together into one man's family that we may know strangers <laughs> yeah, on the other side of the world. But I thank God that we're brought together as family. Very few of you I've actually met in person so far, but I thank God that I feel in my heart like I know you all. So I bless the Lord for that. I bring greetings from my pastor, the elder Dexter Miller and the saints in Toronto, Canada. Now let's get to the word of God from the book of 2 Corinthians, the eighth chapter. If you've ever felt discouraged, if you've ever felt alone, if you've ever felt like you needed some encouragement and some support, if you felt like you just were not good enough, if you ever felt like your efforts, no matter how valiant, were not good enough and that they were insufficient, then I have good news for you today, the word is for you. The book of 2 Corinthians, the eighth chapter and the ninth verse. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. I'll read it one more time. 2 Corinthians, the eighth chapter and the ninth verse. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. For a subject this morning, the ultimate investment. The ultimate investment. Yeah, the ultimate investment. An investment is what some might call a down payment. It is a belief, an expectation. Yeah, an investment, an expectation that when you put something out, which is usually monetary, monetary donation or finances, when you put something out, the expectation and the belief and the hope is that you'll get something greater in return. The expectation when you dish something out is that you'll get more in return and that it'll be the return will be worth your investment. We make small investments every day of our lives, whether we realize it or not. We invest in ourselves by logging on to Zoom and spending time with the Lord and studying the word of God. We invest in our spiritual man. We invest in the church that we are part of by paying our obligations and by working in the ministry according to the position that we have. We make investment in our children by giving them the best education possible. We invest in our loved ones and in our homes, our households, by going to work and by gaining employment and getting income. We invest in ourselves physically by watching what we eat and by exercising. We make investments every day that we may not be cognizant of because they've become such an integral part of our daily lives, but make no mistake about it, these are investments. Well, what makes an investment an investment? What, what makes an investment an investment is your expectation of the return. Amen. I, I'm going to eat a salad today in expectation that the return is nutrition and health to my body. I'm making an investment in going to work every day in expectation that I'm going to get money in return to take care of my household. It's the sacrifice along with the expectation, the ultimate investment. What makes an investment is the sacrifice coupled with 
the expectation. And so we're talking today about the ultimate investment. Well, some investors who invest much more than we do in our daily lives are small investments. There are people who are in the world who are well off and they invest their finances, they invest their time and their resources into business to get more money, how the rich get richer. They invest all that they have into people that they know or into businesses or ideas that they have in expectation that it will grow, that it will develop and that they'll have more to come from that. Yeah, and so when someone goes to invest, they have what you call a cost analysis and a risk assessment. You have to analyze the cost and what it's going to cost you to invest. And then you have your risk analysis and you analyze the risk that you're taking when you're investing because the danger here, I told you, investment is sacrifice coupled with expectation. And so there's always danger in sacrifice. The danger is that you may not get what you expect in return. And so you do a risk analysis and you analyze everything that you're risking. You analyze the money, you analyze the time and your resources, you analyze all of that and then you make a determination as to whether it's worth investing or not amen you analyze how much it's going to cost yeah and then what your risk factor is the ultimate investment and so these people who invest all of their time and money and resources they usually are pretty good at it over time you get better and better i would assume and then that's how you gain more and more capital Amen. Because you believe in what you're investing in. Well, <laughs> I want to talk to you today about an investor, <laughs> an investor who looked at a product, who looked at the idea, <laughs> who knew that there was something that needed to be salvaged. Yeah, that need there was something that needed to be breathed life into. He, he knew that there was something, there was someone who needed to be saved. And so he is the ultimate investor. But this investor that we're talking about today, he, he looked at you and he looked at his cost assessment and his risk analysis and he knew that you would be full of trouble. He knew that you would be full of sin and shame and degradation and he, he knew that you would be downtrodden. He, he knew that you would fail over and over again. He, he knew that you would make countless mistakes. He, he knew that you would be a disappointment. He knew that there was a chance that he might not get a return on his investment, but still he invested in you. This investor named Jesus made an investment in you because he believed in you. Yeah, this investor called Jesus. He weighed the pros and the cons. And he said, as the general said earlier in Hebrews in 10th chapter, he said, it's not possible, yeah, for the blood of bull and of goats to, to have sacrifice. It's not sufficient. And so this investor told his father, prepare me a body and I'll go down to be the sacrifice. And the sacrifice I'm making is going to be coupled with the expectation that I have of my people. Lord have mercy. The investment is sacrifice coupled with expectation. And that's what makes the investment with your faults and with your troubles. This investor against all Lord have mercy, against all odds, he invested in you. He left his throne. The word says, yeah, that though he was rich as most investors are, he was rich. Lord, the Bible tells me my father is rich in houses and lands. This investor sat next to his father on the throne. This investor, the son of God was there from creation. This investor had all power in his hand. This investor went from celestial. This investor came down here and said, Lord, prepare me a body. This investor had all he could ever ask for and more, and yet he gave it all up. Though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. Lord, have mercy. Oh, I'm talking about the ultimate investor, the ultimate investor, Jesus Christ. He invested in you. The general said this morning that we are as spilled milk. <laughs> yeah, that we are, that we are waste. Amen. Sometimes we feel that way. Sometimes we feel like we've been wasted. Sometimes we feel like our gifts are not being used. 
Sometimes we feel like our loved ones and friends don't believe in us. Sometimes we feel like we're not supported. Sometimes we feel like we're just not good enough. Sometimes we feel like we're doing all that we can and it's not being received. We, we, we feel inadequate in many ways. But I'm telling you today, people of God, to be encouraged to know that the ultimate investor saw something in you against all odds and he invested in you. And he knew that you would fail, but still he invested. He knew that there was a chance that he might not get a return on his investment. We're, we're taught in the word that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've all got mistakes. We, we all go through some things. We've all got shortcomings. And Jesus knew that you would be this way. You might think that your troubles are too hard for God that your problems are too large and that you've messed up too greatly, that you've sinned in a mighty way and that iniquity has overtaken your life. You, you might feel as though you're inadequate and people may say that you're inadequate, Lord have mercy, and people may make you feel like you're inadequate, but there is an ultimate investor today who believes, who believes in you and he gave his life. He paid the ultimate sacrifice and that's what love is today his sacrifice coupled with his expectation. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know, I know the plans that I have for you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. That's the expectation. Jesus made the sacrifice and there's the expectation. The sacrifice coupled with the expectation. He said, I'll give you an expected end. But what is it that you're expecting today? He made the sacrifice that you might have a right to the tree of life. He, he made the sacrifice and he, he said that you have opportunity now to live with him. What are you going to do with that investment? When someone invests in you, what are you doing with that investment? I dare you, I challenge you today to give a return on the investment that the Lord made in you. Give a return on the investment. Well, Deacon, how do I do that with the life that you live? Amen. With the deeds done in your body, with the work that you have. And someone said earlier that their works do follow them. What works are going to follow you when you pass yeah. from this life? What do you have to speak for you? What's the life that you're living? The sacrifice was made and now is the time for the expectation to come into fruition. It's time for us. The ball is in our courts. How are you living for the Lord today? In what areas? of your life, are you reflecting that you're a saint of the most high God? How are you living today? How are you being grateful to the Lord for his investment in you? Don't, don't, don't take grace for granted. Yeah, the, the word says that grace and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, but I'm telling you that grace comes to an end the day your life is over. Amen. When you die, there's nothing you can do from that point. Amen. And so we've got to make sure that before or we pass on, that we have a return on the investment the Lord made in us, that we give ourselves over to him as he gave himself over to us and say, Lord, my life is in your hands. Lord, I give you my life. I give you my hands. I work for you. Lord, I, I give my all to you. What's the return on the investment? The Lord invested in you. Saints, he invested in you. So what is the return that you are giving him? The word says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave, this is the investment, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Lord, have mercy, but shall have everlasting life. You have everlasting life as an opportunity to you because of the sacrifice that he made. And now it's time for the expectation. Well, Deacon, why would such a God <laughs> invest so greatly in me? Why would he invest in me if he knew I was going to fail in some ways, if, if he knew I was going to fall short, if he knew that I was not going to make the mark, if he knew that I was going to be full of tr trouble, why would he invest in me? It's, it's too much pressure, right? <laughs> yeah, to know that God invested in you. Come with me to Philippians, the first chapter and the sixth verse. I'm going to tell you why the ultimate investor invested in you. Make no mistake about it. He chose you intentionally. Yes, he, he gave his life up just for you. It's a personal thing. We had the song this morning played just for me. 
He paid the ransom just for me. It's got to be a personal thing today to know that your savior gave his life just for you. Philippians 1 and 6, being confident of this very thing that he, Lord, have mercy, being confident. That's the first step, being confident, Lord, have mercy of this very thing, knowing undoubtedly, absolutely, unequivocally, being confident, unwavering of this very thing. You've got to know that you know that you know that you right. know. Being confident, Lord, have mercy. When the storms of life start to rage and, and the investment seems like it's not worth it, and, and then the cost factor starts to come and the risk factor starts to come back to your mind and you say, well, maybe I made a mistake and maybe he didn't mean to invest in me and maybe he meant to invest in someone else and why would he seek so highly of me? But when you start to feel that way, you've got to be confident of this very thing. Yes, it's a lie from hell that you're not good enough. It's a lie from hell that you're not equipped and that you're inadequate. It's a lie from hell that your tabernacle will not succeed. It's a lie from hell that your marriage will not succeed. It's a, it's a lie from hell that you will not finish school. It's a lie from the devil himself that you will not make it and that you don't have what it takes. You've got to be confident as hard as life gets. Being confident of this very thing, this thing is what you've got to be confident of. Lord have mercy. Being confident of this very thing that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. That he that began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. There's so much wrapped up in this word. I'm, I'm so excited. Lord have mercy. He which began a good work in you yeah, the investor, <laughs> he started this. Remember, he said, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Yeah, and he said, you were formed and made in his image. And so he's the one who started it all. Someone called him Alpha, and that's why he's Omega. He started, and so he's going to finish. He's the beginning and the end. He is the creator. He's the one who made you in his image and in his likeness. And then he said it was very good. He who began a good work, he started it, so he has the power to finish it. When I buy a product from Amazon, and I get it, and it's not what I expect. I send it back to the manufacturer to send me the thing again. Jesus Christ is the manufacturer. He's the creator. And when you feel like you're not good enough, return unto him. Lord, have mercy. Reach out your hands and say, Lord, I need you to save me. Lord, I go back to my creator, yes. to my roots, to where it all began. He that began a good work. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. There may be some other stuff in you right now some stuff that's not so good oh god i'm coming down your street yeah we've got to admit that sometimes there are parts of us that are not so good that are not so pretty that are not so holy that are not so lovely that are not so honorable we've got to admit that sometimes there are parts of us that are not pleasant that are not pleasurable to experience we've got to admit that there's some stuff in us that's not always good but god said he wants to focus on what's good people have a way of reminding you of the negativity they remind you of what you said and what you did and when you were not holy and when you were not saved and before you got sanctified they'll remind you of the mistakes that you made they'll remind you of when you fell short they'll remind you of when you were not good enough they'll remind Mind you of every mistake that you made, Lord have mercy. But God said, I want to finish the good work. Oh God, I, I, even if it's just an ounce, I, I know that there's some goodness inside of you because I made you and you were made in my image and my likeness. And so I know that there's some goodness in you. And God said, I just want to work on the good part. Never mind everything else. People have been focusing on the negative. You've had so much negativity in your mind and so much negative influence around you. But God said, I want to work on the good part. I just want to focus on what's good. What's good. I want to focus on the good part, being confident of this very thing that he who began a good work, hallelujah, in you will complete it. How long? Until the day of Jesus Christ. Remember I told you, you have until your life is over. He wants to complete the good work until the day of Jesus Christ, until Jesus comes back. He'll be working on that good part. He'll be building. And, and the thing about an investment, a good investor invests more than once. Hmm. He's investing in you over and over again until the day of Jesus Christ. He's working on the good part. Somebody say working on the good part. 
He's working on the good part. He's going to complete the good work that he started in you. You got to know that there's some goodness inside of you, no matter how bad you feel. There's some goodness on the inside of me because I know that the word says greater is he. Oh, God, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. There's some goodness on the inside of me, too. I know you know all about me. I know you know how I messed up, but there's some goodness inside of me because there's some God in me. It's the God. (laughs) It's the God in me. There's some goodness in me. That's why he made the ultimate investment, because he believed in you. He believed in your future. An investment, an investor can take something so ugly, so beat up, so diminished, so downtrodden. An investor has the, the foresight to take something that no one else wants. And they make it grand. They make it great. They make it glorious. An investor takes something that nobody else wants. Oh, I'm so glad to know that even when man doesn't want me, Lord, have mercy when people throw me away. Jesus, the ultimate investor, hung and died on the cross for me so that I might have a right to the tree of life. He is the ultimate investor. Let me tell you something else about this ultimate investor. In his desire to complete the good work he started in you, he sacrificed and then he had expectation. And guess what? The expectation is because he's in love with your potential. He's in love with what you have to come. If you've ever been in love, you know that the feeling of being in love has you enthralled, has you engulfed, it has you thinking about this person you may be in love with 24-7. When I go to the supermarket for a few minutes, I'm thinking about my wife and wanting to get back home to her because I'm so in love. When you're in love with something, it's all you can think about, it's all you focus on, it's all your energy, all your money, all your resources, everything that you have goes to what you are in love with. Yeah, if you're in love, I'm in love with the word of God. I'm in love with the people of God. And so I spend my time in the word. I spend my time communing with him. God is in love with your potential. That means he cannot stop thinking about your future. He cannot stop focusing on your potential. He's in love with your tomorrow. He's in love with what's to come of you. You may not be where you want to be today, but God is in love with your potential. He's in love with what he knows is on the inside of you because he said, I made you in my image and in my likeness. I I know what's inside of you. I need you to believe in you like I believe in you. I need you to say about you what I say about you. God says, I said you're more than a conqueror. I said you are victorious. I said that no tongue that's risen against you shall prosper. I said that you'll have afflictions, but you'll be prosperous. God said you're rich. God God says, I want you to speak about you the way I speak about you because you're good. I'm in love with your potential. Yeah, God's in love with your potential. He's not concerned with how you look today. Oh God, the point of investing is looking for the future. You sacrifice with the expectation that it will get better. And so in your sin, in your misery, in your problems, in your troubles, in your shortcomings, I want you to know that Jesus loves you still. Hallelujah. He said that he who is well doesn't need a physician. He he said, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. He died. He he invested in what's ugly. Lord have mercy. He invested in what was not complete. So I'll be the first to say I'm not the most saintly person. You know, I'm not the most holy person there is because I know that I need to admit my faults so that I can have access to his saving grace and to salvation. So I'll admit that, Lord, I'm sick if it means I have access to healing. I'll admit that I have problems if it means I have access to resolution. I'll admit, Lord, have mercy, to being in lack if it means I have access to extreme wealth. You've got to admit today that you struggle, that you've got shortcomings, that you are not the prettiest thing walking around, but that you're worth investing in because your future is bright. Your future is bright. Our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Oh, God, this light affliction is but for a moment. This ugly state that you're in, this this hurtful place, the the pain that you're experiencing, the the heartache of COVID, the confusion of COVID, yeah, the lack of COVID, the distress, the monetary instability, the mental instability, that is COVID. It will not last, but it's just a light affliction, and it will last but for a moment. And guess what? It's working. It's working. It's doing something. It's working for us a far more exceeding and eternal way 
of glory, the ultimate investor, Jesus Christ. He is the ultimate investor. How many of us are willing to admit today that we need to be invested in? Mm. Yeah, an investor can invest in an idea that a friend has or that they, they have, or that's brand new, an idea that's brand new, or they can invest in something that's already existing, that's currently in trouble and in distress. We happen to be in the category of being in trouble and being distressed. And so we've been here, but he's investing in us, giving us new life, giving us opportunity to start over, to start fresh here and now today. Today is your opportunity to be invested in, to bring all your needs to the altar, bring all your needs to the Lord. For he is so willing and able to help you. You, hallelujah, you, you're, you're not outside of the reach of God. His arm is not short that he cannot save you. He can hear you. He can heal you. He, he can comfort you. He can make you whole. I know it's been so long since you've been whole. I know it's been so long since you've been healed. I know it's been so long that you've been suffering in silence, but you're not outside of the reach of God and you're not beyond investment. Lord, have mercy. Tell your neighbor you're not beyond investment. Oh, God, not beyond investment. Say it with me. Not beyond investment. You're worth saving. Oh, God, he believes in you. You're worth investing. He's in love with your potential. Oh God, he believes in your tomorrow. So glad to know that my savior believes in my tomorrow. And so I have hope. Yeah, the brother said earlier, it is of the Lord's mercies. Jeremiah is lamenting in the book of Lamentations in the third chapter. Matter of fact, from the first chapter into the third chapter, he was lamenting, 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 crying and complaining. But he got to the 21st or 23rd verse of the third chapter and he said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. He said, let me get myself together. <laughs> we sometimes spend years and years crying and in despair, but Jeremiah said, wait a minute, this, <laughs> this I recall to my mind. It is of the Lord's mercies yes. that we are not consumed, oh God, because his compassions, they fail not. They are new every morning. Oh God, they are new every morning. Every every morning you wake up, they, they were new this morning when you got up. They, they'll be new again tomorrow morning. They are new every morning. God, I thank you for reinvesting in me each and every day of my life. Oh God, I'm so grateful to know that each day of breath, each day of new life is reinvestment. Somebody say reinvestment. Reinvestment in me, in me, in my sinful flesh. He reinvested in me this morning when I woke up at spring, when I woke up at 2.45 this morning. I got up for service to prepare myself. He invested in me when he breathed breath into my body. Yeah, when he opened my eyes and said, my child, I'm reinvesting in you today. You fell short yesterday. You disappointed me yesterday. You hurt me. You went against me with your thoughts and with your actions. But here's a new day, new opportunity. We're not consumed by the troubles of this world because of his compassions which fail not. It's so easy for us to be consumed. Yeah, if the Lord had not been my help, the word says, my enemies would have swallowed me up. My, my enemy of depression would have swallowed me up. My, my enemy of anxiety would have swallowed me up. My, my enemy of insecurity and low self-esteem would have swallowed me up. My enemy of anger, my enemy of malice, my enemy of jealousy, my enemies would have swallowed me up. I, I would have been consumed. I, I should have been consumed. I, I could have been consumed. But he invested in me and he gave me new life to start over. He is the ultimate investor. He never gives up on you. It's a reinvestment every day. God is in love with your potential. He's in love with what he knows is to come of you in your life. Yeah, and so investment is sacrifice coupled with expectation. So what is the expectation today? What does God expect of you? And what do you expect of yourself? Those two things should align. Amen. God expects greatness of you. You ought to expect greatness of yourself. Amen. Regardless of what people say and how people make you feel, you've got to expect greatness of yourself. Have high standards. Yeah, have standards of excellence 
as a way of life. Amen. Know that you're greater. You're greater than this. Sometimes you got to look in the mirror and say, you know what? You're better than this. You're better than how you've been behaving. You're better than what you've been thinking. You're better than that. You're better than that. God knows it and you know it. And it's time you start acting like it. He invested in you and he expects a return on his investment. I understand it's okay. You've been falling short. You've made some mistakes. You haven't been attending your services. You haven't been paying your obligations. You haven't been doing as your pastor asked you to do. You haven't been praying. You haven't been reading. haven't been studying. You have not been doing what God calls of you. You have not been encouraging. You have not been inspiring. You have not been living the life God calls you to live. And that's okay. Today is a new chance to start over. To look in the mirror and be honest with yourself and say, you know what? You're better than that. You're better than that. God sacrificed and he expects greatness of you. He expects you to have the same expectation of yourself. He is Jesus Christ, the ultimate investor. He invested his blood in you. Hallelujah. And so what are you going to invest back into him and his people for his kingdom to grow? God bless you. God keep you is my prayer.